to found what they called the New Israel. It was America. They founded on the biblical principles. In fact, uh, the media plays this down and says that America was never founded in a Christian nation and never meant to be a Christian nation. And some of the founders were Christians. That's all malarkey. Because the founding fathers themselves, by their very words, said that that's what they were founded. The Declaration, the Constitution, and who later came, signed it. Uh, Before that, they found the, uh, the, the, the land here and developed the country prior to it being the United States. Now, they came, as I say, they found the new Israel. It was a, it was a, the, the United States put on history. Clay was founded simply as a Christian nation. Period. No question about it. It cannot be denied, although it is denied. It can't be denied that history tells us different. It's the way it is, whether we like it or not. I mean, not we like it. I mean, whether the people who claim otherwise don't like it, well, that's too bad. Now, since, since this nation was founded, we went to war with Britain. Uh, seems like we, we, we kind of forgot here that, uh, you know, we fought the empire on which the sun never set, and we defeated it with a handful of farmers and ranchers, and uh, we, we, we kicked them out, but behind the scenes, even some of our founding fathers, like uh, Hamilton, were working for the bankers to try to get this whole... Uh, banking set up to get this whole empire set up again. Isn't that, uh, is, is that accurate? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody, everybody was not for, in, in the colony, everybody was not for independence. Everybody was not for an independent nation. You had a lot of British sympathizers. What happened was it ended up that the British sympathizers had to run to Canada because they had, they had just didn't work that way. Uh, but it was a bunch of, uh, you might say, a ragtag militia. People, uh, uh, farmers, uh, people who uh, uh, hunted for their food, uh, they owned their weapons, which is one thing we're going to talk about today. Uh, this is one, one of the reasons for the British war defeated. Now, you've got to remember, people have to know and have to think about this. This country was, the, the, the people who defeated the British, the British were at the time, as you said, the sun never set on the British Empire because that means that they had colonies all over the world. There was always, always a 24 hour day. There was always somewhere in the world that people were waking up in the morning when other people were going to bed that night. It was the greatest war machine ever known to man at that time. Great Britain. Everybody. If they didn't respect them, they still meant to obey them. The, the, the colonies said, hey, wait a minute, and then they decided to fight. They thought, my point is this, very quickly, they fought and defeated the greatest war machine ever known to man at that time. The British had the greatest navy. We had no navy. Remember, we had no navy at the time of the revolution to start. Uh, we had no standing army. Uh, Washington tried to set a standing army up in the Continental Congress and said, hey, look, we got to stop this, we got to limit it to 5,000 men. And he said, well, fine, okay, limit it to 5,000, but also make sure that no one attacks us with more than 5,000. If you can guarantee that and do that, then, then I'll go along with it. They wanted to limit it to 5,000. Why? Because they felt like a strong military would take over and have a dictatorship in this country. That's not the way it's set up with the Constitution. This is one of the reasons that nowadays we want to get rid of the Constitution. We want to let it down, which we have, they had done in the, the left wing. I call them, I don't call them liberal. They're not liberal. They're left wing, they're leftist, they're, they're socialist, communist. Uh, we have quite a few congressmen, people in our Congress who are socialists, we want to get a national socialist a group. Uh, what are they? Well, a socialist is simply, and you know this, a socialist, the simplest way to define a socialist. Is a person, it's a communist without a gun. You put the guns in their hands and that's it. The communist thing, and the dictatorship is. I'm, I'm simplifying. But basically, that's it. 
Now, at, at this at this point in time when America was formed, in this same time period, in, this, in that same century, we were having wars in, uh, in Europe, uh, wars uh, with Napoleon, wars, uh, you know, France, and, uh, and, and, and they, the, the Rothschilds had banks and uh, offices in every country. They were started right there in Germany, and then they went over to England and uh, insinuated themselves in the e England and helped finance and probably solely responsible financing the British war machine that attacked America, that was used against Americans, and was used against France. Uh, at the same time, nothing's changed, has it? Well, no, it hasn't. Because, again, going back to Washington, Washington was aware of this. And so were many of the founding fathers, these were really sharp thinking back. Uh, when you have to read the Declaration, you have to admire the thinking that went into this, the Constitution, the thinking that went into this. These men got together and they wrote the most glorious documents. And by the way, the Constitution is the shortest Constitution in the world, but it's the most meaningful. Yeah, the yeah, the Rothschilds, you're right. Uh, but remember this in the beginning, George Washington said, he was aware of this, he said, we must not get involved in the, in the, the, the European conflicts of European state mind their own business. They did not want America to get involved in European... And if you try to well, do that today, if you try to say that today, they start calling your names like, oh, you're an isolationist. Of course. Of course. But so what? Wonderful. What we do, the Rockefellers set up the United Nations. Where was it set up? It should have been set up in Moscow. It should have been set up in Moscow. Why do I say that? Because it's totally, to this day, it was developed and set up by Alger Miss, who was the Soviet agent, and all of his cohorts. I mean, I can name them right down the line. In fact, uh, one of my books, A Gary from God's the Nation Betrayed, is covering, does cover the history of the founding of the UN. And it's a very fast paced book, reads like a novel. It just shocks the daylights out of you. When you think of, of, of the people who founded the United Nations, why it was founded, and what and it was put on American soil, who donated the property for the UN stamps? Rockefeller. Exactly. Exactly. Right. It was planned. It was planned from the very beginning. It was the founding documents of the UN were done in San Francisco. It was determined long before that New York was willing that we're going to set set to have the United Nations. Okay. It's not that it was just New York, Manhattan. It was simply that it was United States. We were entrapped. We were caught into this. Now, the, 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 the terrible thing about it, though, is when the Congress voted on the UN Charter, okay? You know, talking about the UN Charter, the guideline, the Constitution of the United Nations, no one read it. No one read it. The vote was all but two congressmen in our United States Congress voted for it. That's an insult. Do you think Congress is any different today? No. Because this is back in the 40s, 1945, I believe it was, but the Congress voted on the acceptance of the UN Charter and the United Nations. They did it. No one read it. No one read it. Yet all but two congressmen voted for it. Uh, what's different now? History repeats itself. Nobody, no, no, I don't it, believe it, any of those congressmen. It, it, it's coming to the point where we're getting into the UN now. Where, where, what were you originally talking before? The Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, which if you know the background, you can understand why she was known in her, when, when her husband was part of the United States. It was brought out that she was known in her young days at Yale as the class comic. That's what they called her. That was her nickname, the class comic. She was followed so far to the left, so far to the left, that they used that she was a joke. Now well, she's took case state. Okay. And she goes to the UN under the instructions of the President of the United States, who's a Muslim, uh, 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 socialist, communist, whatever you want to call Mr. Obama. Uh, it's a planned thing he set up for this. Uh, 
He didn't have the brains himself to, to run anything uh, other than a Chicago street uh, organization. But he had the handlers behind him. Not when I say handlers, that means people behind him who are in the know who have been there for a specific purpose, and that is to screw up the United States, take it down the road to self destruction. But getting back to Hillary, we, not too long ago, she went to the UN and she signed an international gun control law. International. Why? Because this is one of the reasons the UN was set up in the first place. They could never disarm the United States by repealing the Second Amendment or passing laws that would override the Second Amendment. No one dared, they didn't have the guts to do this because the American people, the percentage of American people that own weapons is incredible. And that is one reason we are a free nation today. And the reason we own weapons is because, as Jefferson said, the people should be armed. And not only Jefferson, but other founding fathers. This is way back in the 1700s. Imagine that thinking ahead that the populace needed weapons. Why? To protect themselves from a foreign power coming on our shores? No. To protect themselves against a dictatorship. To protect themselves against a government that would decide to take all power. And this is their weapon. Ownership of guns. This is why it was founded in the first place. This is why the laws were passed in the first place. So Hillary goes in, so they couldn't disarm us by changing the Second Amendment. It was too controversial. If all the congressmen got together and voted to ban guns, every voter in a they would be voted out of office. This is why it was controversial. Things can't get out know, of history. They would not do it because they would not stay in office forever. People would not put up for it. Now, okay, you've got to accept voter. She goes in and signs the UN law, well, the UN thing on weapons, on guns, banning guns, not internationally. Now, this is international. All other countries in the world have got together and made up this rule. You all sign in on it. But now, what we're told then is that supersedes the Constitution of the United States, the United Nations rules. Okay, so. What they've done effectively, they set it up now so they can circumvent, get around the, the, uh, the Second Amendment. Because now we can say, oh my, I say we, that the socialist communists who wanted to do this from the very beginning of time now are in a position to say, hey, you know, we don't have to get rid of the, we don't have to get rid of the Second Amendment. The UN Charter supersedes the Second Amendment. So therefore, what do we do when we take American soldiers, we take the National Guard, bring them in and go house to house and pick up weapons from the people? No. They would bring in soldiers from Bulgaria, from Russia, from China, from the Congo, and let them do it because they have nothing. They have no investment in America. They don't even know what it is. They're from dictatorships. So they will come in, and this will happen in our lifetime. So I'm sorry, but it'll happen. It has already, Robert, it, it's already happened. The uh, When the hurricane hit uh, New York there, they brought in Mexican troops. Of course. Uh, of course. Uh, this is, this is, but this is just staging. This is just staging to get us used to it. It's used to it because we have been told, we have been already told, I mean, it's already in history, it's already written. It's cool. We'll get on the internet and check. People can learn these things. The internet will have the information. But the UN troops have been. Yes, they have been. A, a, a Mexican. And you've had the foreign troops on our soil. All of our military bases are inundated with foreign troops being trained, being trained by our troops. For what? For their own country? Not all. Yeah, sure. To a point. But they're also being trained. They're getting used to being American. They learn they, they speak very good English. They would be brought in to put in effect the anti gun law. They can do this, and our politicians can say, Oh, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm against this, but there's nothing we can do. I mean, it's the UN, it's the international law. Therefore, they can confiscate weapons. It's already been told, it's already been done, where they say, Hey, when they come in, if, they, if we do not give up a weapon, then shoot you. This is all the 
because it's already worked out. It's not me. Over so when the bill comes, the bill comes will be the one coming to your bill. Over 15 so. years ago, I I published uh, the uh, questionnaire that was given to uh, the troops at uh, 29 Palms there in California asking them if they would, uh, if the troops were asked if they would uh, confiscate weapons from Americans. Now, I said about the war that was started from 9-11, that used as an excuse, used an excuse that uh, <laughs> uh, to, to go to war with Iraq, to take the oil from Iraq and, and pump it to the uh, to Israel, straight into Israel. That's where all of our bases were lined up. I said that they, they were using Iraq as a training ground uh, for our troops to come back home here to take over, take our guns here. And that uh, looks like what had happened. Exactly, exactly, exactly. You're, you're, you're quite right. The thing is, though, you see, the international, the people who are pulling the strings, it's like we're a puppet, like all other countries are puppets, but the people behind the scenes, they know or they feel they cannot trust the American soldier, the American military to do their bidding against their own people, which is probably true. There's always room to pay some of screw up. This is, again, why they would bring in the United Nations. I call them the Blue Helmets. Because they can be trusted. If you bring in a bunch of Congolese troops who have been used to murder mayhem all over, all over Africa, why would they care? You put a machete in their hand, and they have blood left. They go crazy. And they don't care about them you, and they don't care about the you. They say, oh, they don't get their weapons. If you don't give it to them, well, I'm going to cut so usually the confiscation, the whole key, the whole key to the victory of the conspiratory is to disarm us. They must disarm us. Because we're the only country, and we're the only country in the world that, that has, or a perception of us. I mean, you go in the army and, and, and this list, you go in the army with an automatic weapon, and you keep that weapon. It's to keep in your home to protect your family. And you keep your weapon that you're assigned in the Swiss Army. But most people don't realize that. That's not, that doesn't happen in the U.S. We buy our own weapons. But we do have gun shows. We do have availability of weapons in this country. So let me come back to me they say, well, one of the ideas that came up a couple of years ago was, oh, well, we can't take their weapons away with the second weapon in place. But we can tax ammunition at a 300% rate. Therefore, if that, now they didn't pass the bill, they tried to pass the bill in charge to raise the interest, there's a percentage of tax on ammunition, in all ammunition, at 300%. Imagine if you bought a box of ammunition for $25 or $30, what it would cost if you had to pay 300% interest on it. You could not afford the box of ammunition, let alone 100 boxes. And people, by the way, the interesting thing too is very recently, you know, during the Y2K in the 1990s, the late 90s, uh, people were buying weapons and, and stopping up on ammunition because the very same thing we're talking about now. But here in Knoxville, Tennessee, and this happened all over the country, but here in Knoxville, they had gun shows, but they were still have gun shows. That's an open thing. Like that you can buy weapons. Now, you, they found that there was a line about a mile long of people waiting to get into the, the most recent gun shows, people wanting to buy weapons that did not have them, or buy ammunition or more ammunition than they already had. Okay, they completely sold out of all your weapons plus all the ammunition. All your local stores, when I say local, I'm talking about all over the state of Tennessee, all your stores have sold out and did sell out. They could not keep guns and ammunition in stock. Everything sold out since Obama was re-elected as president of the United States. Now that has to tell you something. People are not stupid. We just act that way quite often. But people have bought up 
a green weapon, a vaginal plus all the ammunition, there was no more. So absolutely, clearly there was no more to buy. This is in your stores in that box store. I know because I called you, so I can just check around and ask. And I got wind of this from friends of mine. People that knew I was telling me there were lines. There were lines of stores trying to buy. So it, it, it's, uh, it's uh, something happened very seriously. And it happened, they, they think it was spontaneous when that man was reelected the president. So readily, so easily, uh, people had it. People think. So there's got to be something going on that people are aware of. If they don't know exactly what it is, they know it's a coming storm. It's a coming storm. Which what means what? It means that Americans have on themselves to become what we had originally in the country of the colony, but that is an armed militia. And what does an armed militia do? It protects their neighborhoods, protects their communities, protects their families, protects their cities. And they can say what they want, hey, it didn't, they didn't mean that, that they didn't mean that. That's what they tell us now. In the original uh, America, uh, early America, that they say that, oh, that's not what they found in Barbara's men, arming the militia. They meant a national guard. No, they did not mean a national guard. They did not mean having a standing army. They meant, besides that, that the people should be armed. And this is what Jefferson said, and this is why they said it. He said that the populace has the right and should have guns to protect themselves against an approaching government, a dangerous, possible dictatorship. And this is the way it works. This is why we have never been a dictatorship, because we had armed resistance. We had people. And the people that were killing them because their weapons had arms, you know, it's just the way it is. Now, what, what's happening right now? This, they, they have been murdering our children to frighten us, to intimidate us. This is what they did at Waco. They murdered 17 little children. They did the same thing exactly one year later in Oklahoma City to stop what we had done, what I had helped do back in 1994. I started the Free American Magazine because we have to get this information out. I started this radio show in 1994 to get this information out and I helped start the militias. And the militias were to protect the people. It wasn't, uh, it, we weren't, uh, in, and I did it in the governor's office, and I did it properly. We weren't, uh, we weren't a terrorist group. And this whole war on terror is, a, I have said, is a war against anyone, anywhere, that uh, opposes one world government, one world banking, and the UN. Well, of course. Now, what about this? What about this murdering our children? I mean, we got 19, uh, 17 children murdered in Waco. We got 19 children murdered in Oklahoma City, and now we've had 20 children uh, murdered in uh, in um, back east there, at Sandy Hook. It's a pattern, though. It's a pattern. It's a pattern. Have you ever had? Have we ever had? The truth come out, the facts come out, the details come out that we either like to know about what happened in that way, for example. Now, have we ever really found the detailed truth about Randy Weaver in the mountains? That in, in, in a home up there, a cabin made out of cardboard, uh, old boxes, and uh, 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 plywood? It, it was, uh, the media called it a uh, compound? I mean, they called the Grand Davidian, where they were a compound, uh, and brought in the tanks, brought in the, uh, the military, as if we had an armed insurrection. Uh, it got away with it. But why? It was set up, to, in my estimation, it was set up to condition the population in the United States to effectively go along with these attacks on our freedoms. Yet they were always defended by the media by calling these places military installations, I mean, the same name, uh, a, a compound. Well, what does a compound represent to you? Uh, really, 
pray, one can think about it, what's a cow belly? It's a font, uh, 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 like a foot, like a foot. So those places were not forts. They were not either. They were armed either. A Red River uh, wasn't, uh, didn't have an armed uh, force out there. He had his family. He had his family. And what was the premise that they brought the troops in on? Because he had modified a shotgun or, or, or whatever it was. I think it was a shotgun. Well, and he cut the barrel, cut the barrel off. But have we ever seen the shotgun? No. Have we ever had really proof of that? No. We've had to be a copying man, but I'm sorry. But I, I've never been able to find the facts on that, and I know a whole lot of people involved around that stuff. But we've never been given the facts, and the media, of course, just shut it off, and uh, it's part of the brainwashing scheme to get us to accept government intervention in places that have no business. Government intervention unconstitutional coming in and doing these things. They, they have no right to go in there and do that to uh, Red and Reuben and his family. I mean, they murdered his wife. They, they put in a high-powered uh, a sniper, a highly efficient sniper with military background and so on, and with the, uh, uh, the, the ATF. They brought in a sniper. To what? He was instructed to kill the woman the head of the house. And he shot her in the head from a long range. And where she was carrying her baby, Randy's daughter, but they blew her head off. I mean, they blew her face off. Okay? The woman was killed deliberately. That's one But the, the, the sniper was assigned to do this. Called methodical, get the woman. That was his job. That's what he was said. I mean, that's a not to be technical and let's get into this thing. That, that, that's a war crime. If there were ever trials held for war crimes in, in, internationally, not only would the people who held that in Cambodia, as Joe Stalin in Russia, and, and so on, uh, not only would they be tried if they were alive for crimes or tried in Argentina or tried you know, afterwards and convicted them. If the world already did, they'd be sent to death. Well, the same thing in, in, happens in the U.S. with some of our leadership. I'm not talking about the American population. I'm talking about some of our leadership. They've done exactly the same things, and they've done it in our own country. Waco, the best of Indians, Randy Weaver, out there, where he was. There's a lot of cases like this. These are war crimes. Well, what about, the, the, let's, let's, let's the, also throw in there, let's add 9-11, let's add... Uh, Let's add oh, yeah. Waco. Let's add, uh, you know, they, they've been doing this uh, forever to scare us. They, they've killed as many uh, and, and probably killed more people than even the Russian uh, Bolshevik Revolution. If you add up the doctors and the uh, lawyers here that have, uh, that have, uh, are killing American people. Well, the goal I can say to people is this. If, if they, anybody listening to your program, if they think that you or I or both of us are really maniacs and a little bit on the crazy side, what they do is I suggest they look on the internet, on Amazon, and they can purchase, for example, a, the great and godly nation betrayed them. And if they read that, they will say, oh my God, how right you are. There is no disputing the facts in the great and godly nation betrayed, which I deal right, yes, it's book three in the Congress of Subversion. But the thing is, it's an expose on the United Nations. And it tells, it's not attacking the UN, it's simply stating the facts as how it was founded, why it was founded, by the very words of the people who did it. Now, if someone can read that book and then come back and say, Clay, you're nuts, and don't have that nut back on that round of thumb, if they could say that, hey, fine, or power Trump, but I'll guarantee you something. If they read the book, they're going to be one of our allies. They're going to be helping spread the word. I mean, the whole point is that with the UN, that Alger this, he was a darling of the Roosevelt's. I mean, he was, Eros, you know, some of her best friends were communists. I mean, she said that. I quoted her, right? But he, but, he but actually, actually, let me, let me uh, interrupt you for just a second. Roosevelt said the same thing, and this is why they went after McCarthy. And you've got a book on McCarthy, too. Oh, I've got the book. Of, it's called the McCarthy Chronicles, book one, part uh, one is treason, uh, and the book, uh, book two in the McCarthy Chronicles is treason. And all it does is it points out 
that all of the, not just John McCarthy, but it's called McCarthy, uh, the McCarthy Chronicles, because Joe was the one that was put, pulled out as the figurehead to destroy by Eisenhower. And uh, 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 Eisenhower paid him his debt. Why? Well, what was Eisenhower's background? I mean, really, no one, no one, really never tells, tells us, no one really knows. It's a very mysterious situation, a very beloved grandfather of the who once said, well, well, invited the Peter Khrushchev to come to our country, who was one of the greatest mass murderers in the world's history. I mean, he was responsible for like 15 million Ukrainians of being starved to death, mm -hmm. uh, deliberately. And he was brought into the United States as a, and, 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 and Eisenhower said, oh, he was very grandfatherly. I mean, he actually held the Eisenhower children on his knee. And he loved children. Well, I say this. How many children did the key to Khrushchev murder? Not only started yet, but by his own hand as he climbed up the dictatorship ladder in the Soviet Union, in Russia. So, I mean, the man was a brutal murderer. Yet, we were trained we were, we were, we were, we were to think, oh, he was a grandfatherly friend. Like, I didn't know he was a grandfatherly friend. But I didn't know he was responsible for more German deaths after World War II. I mean, he, it's a war crime. I mean, you can read that. Uh, other losses by a French author. It's, 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 it's on the internet. You can buy it. It's called Other Losses. And uh, I don't remember the, name, the author's name. It's Yacht somebody. But it's not hard to find. Just type in on Amazon Other Losses. Or another place you can buy it. There would be uh, many places you can buy it. But there are many something in bookstores uh, or book dealers. And one is Alibis, A L I B R I S dot com. Get on that. And, 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 and type in other losses. And it's a hard bound book. You pick it up for about five hours. It tells about the history of uh, the German population after World War II. I'm not talking about during World War II, when you were soldiers were killing soldiers. I'm talking about a government who had a policy, who had a policy uh, at, at, to delete, eliminate the German population. And Eisenhower. Eisenhower was called in the West Point yearbook that terrible Polish Jew. And, and, and he, the, the Jewish people declared war on the German people with a full page ad in the New York Times. And they were, and, uh, and after the war, the American soldiers and the Soviet soldiers divided up Berlin and raped a million women, German women. Well, of course, it was very brutal. And the, the, the idea was to destroy the German population and never again would be able to create them. Remember, they had World War I and World War II. German, Germany signed a Versailles Treaty. They were screwed around really bad. And uh, the World War II with uh, Adolf Hitler came into power and decided, hey, we've got to build, as a matter of pride, the German Republic again. Because we got his, his main thing was, was, was motivating uh, Hitler was that he, had, he knew history. And he knew the Germans had been screwed around badly uh, in, in, after World War I, this time with everything. What he was going to do was to put, again, put together all German speaking. Of countries in Europe back into Germany, which had belonged there in the first place. So, I mean, he was a bad guy in many ways, but what really hurts me, Clay, is that quite often you'll see, let's see, in, uh, in the media, you'll see where they talk about uh, Hitler being the greatest, the worst dictator the world had ever known the most cruel and ruthless. But actually, they don't mention Joe Stalin. Uh, uh, Hitler, uh, compared to Stalin, was running a, a sinister picnic. But all of the things in Germany, we never will know the truth because the loser of the war does not get the truth without the winner writes the history. And we write the history. Uh, we and all of European countries who are socialist countries. So, so the history of, this, of Hitler and Germany is very really distorted. We never will know the truth. Uh, so, so um, what I'm saying is that uh, Hitler was was a patsy compared to Joe Stalin. Joe Stalin was absolutely the worst 
dictator to ever the most cruel, most ruthless, most murderous ever on the face of the earth, period. None in history were any worse than that man. Yet Hitler, you never hear that about Stalin. You hear it about Hitler. Germany, only Germany, and the, and the camps, and the buttons, and this and that. Everything, like, like Hitler was a man who did it all himself, no one else did. Of course, we know better than that. But uh, he was the dictator, yes he was. But um, I, I, I say this, that he was not all bad. Yeah, he was loved by the German people. He destroyed the bankers. He kicked the Rothschilds out of Germany, and uh, they moved over to England and immediately they immediately declared war. And I said that the Second World War was basically the story of three communist countries attacking Germany and Italy, attacking uh, Christians again. Exactly right, exactly right. Yeah, why is every plank? I mean, we, we're not supposed to know about communism, and, and I, 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 I've got this stuck in my mind, the conversation between Joe, Stahl, uh, or, or Joe McCarthy and James Forrestal, where McCarthy said something about the communists being stupid, and Forrestal disagreed with him. He said consistency is not the mark of stupidity. If they were no. just stupid, occasionally they'd make a mistake in our favor. Right, exactly. Exactly, but also Fosco, if you remember, you go back a little further, Fosco kept violence. Names, dates, and places. Uh, people, traitors in the United States, didn't know what they did, when they did it, and who they were pals with. Well, those diaries if you recall, were confiscated by the Germans, the President of the United States. Confiscated and kept in the White House safe. My question is this, where are they? Where are they? Were they taken out of Germany? Were they, I mean, are they still in the state? And why have they not been brought out? And let people know what Forrest Law had to say. Well, why didn't Forrest Law tell us? He couldn't. Yeah, they threw, him out, the, uh, they threw him out of the... 13th uh, story of uh, well, uh, yes, the Naval true. Hospital. I think, it was a, I think it was the 13th floor of the uh, hospital where he was incarcerated. He was picked up uh, as a mental case by the administration, labeled as a nut, and then imprisoned him with psychiatric uh, treatment for psychiatric treatment. Well, when he was up there, he, uh, the poor guy was so distraught that he jumped out the window. Yeah. Uh, come on, he, yeah, but he had a rope around, a, a bath rope uh, 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 tie around his neck. And he was dead when he jumped out. Well, he was thrown out of the window, and I mean, everyone knows that because any knowledge of history, James Forrestal was murdered. I mean, he jumped out with a bath rope, a bath rope uh, uh, tie around his neck. He was driving and then crossed out the window. Well, the report came out on the media that he was uh, he committed suicide. He jumped. Well, no, he didn't jump. I mean, it was the, it was the assassin, assassination factor. He was rid of his man. He was too dangerous. He knew too much. But he had diaries to back up what he did. And he was a threat to not only the administration, but if you remember, they had to shut McCarthy up uh, uh, because uh, he, like the Roosevelt administration, started it out. Truman administration on the one with it. And all we can do is infiltration into the U.S. government, which is a fact. Uh, McCarthy exposed a lot of it. But McCarthy was not, McCarthy was just a culprit. He was just picked. He was just picked to make an example of the man to throw the fear of hell into any other American who would ever dare to try to expose the infiltration of the Kremlin of uh, Russia. There's their Soviet spies. Well, McCarthy is a, you know, he's in the media even today. You'll see that the smacks of McCarthyism. I mean, if you make an accusation on a politician question, they'll say, Oh, do you could dare question my patriotism? Well, hell yeah. By the very acts, you question their patriotism. Some of them, I'm not saying all, but they'll say, Oh, well, that smacks of McCarthyism. That means it's right wing, it's a nut running race, and, you, and, and also, you are a McCarthy addict. Now, come later in this week. Over the dates up a little bit. The John Lewis Society was founded by a candidate for Joseph Welch in Belmont, Massachusetts. 
Well, it became so popular throughout the U.S. and, and, and had little groups, or cells, whatever you want, people joining the Bush Academy. It, it just went on and on and on. Uh, it grew immensely. It became a threat to the stability of the left, the communists. Uh, they would then use the term, they got away from McCarthy uh, because it was red dated and uh, people were past that. So they came up with a new term that was, if you remember this, Birchite, Birchism, oh, you're a Birchite. Well, if you said Birchite, it was so innovative in your mind that you backed off on any, any questioning, you shut your mouth to back you off with word Birchite or Birchism. Because it was a, it was a bad name that implied you were some sort of a radical, not one of those who uh, uh, didn't know what you were talking about. At accusing of false information, people of being rich. Well, you, they were, the Bush Society was 99% right with all they did. Uh, I'm very familiar with them. I'm very familiar with them. What they I used to be subscribed to the newspaper, the American opinion, and so on. And uh, uh, I was uh, 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 on the outskirts of that, but I knew people who were members. And, uh, and I lived in Mississippi for a while. It was very prevalent that well, people would say, well, this is really what they're saying. No, no, no. Mississippi is the worst at that point. They don't develop students, but you do have cities in Mississippi who are very developed. That's the one where the rest of the industry is still anchored in some ways. So, I mean, you know, it's not a bunch of student people. It, 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 but they were they were labeled as uh, uh, brought out. In, in, in nationally, as Birchites and Birchism, which took the place of the Carthagites and the Carthagites. People of New Orleans would go, oh, what are you, a Birchite? Well, right away, people would back off and say, well, no, of course not. And they probably won't. But Birchism, or being a Birchite, was some sort of a radical nut like this. Like a loose panic, you might call it, you know. But that was a threat to uh, the, the stability of the communists uh, and the left wing, the uh, socialist uh, programming for the U.S. If that grew, they might lose their power. They might lose everything. And we might be, again, a free nation. We're not really right now. We are still a free country in name only. But if, if, if they were not really, then you could have things that happen to the other people and have to address the business and get away with it. And not and have a media that did not complain about it, did not, did not challenge what the federal government is doing. When you have a, when you have a, uh, 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 a woman like Janet Reno running the, uh, uh, running the party that she ran. I mean, she was a left wing nut. But she wasn't really a nut because she knew exactly what she was doing. She was picked out to do the job she did and she did it very well. She was able to, whatever she wanted, to send the force of, of government into an area and do the job they had to do. Janet Reno. Well, you have other Janet Reno as you want to and they had a lot, they, 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 uh, another, of the PNW situation, American prisoners, American boys left behind in Vietnam. They were left behind. I've got a book on that. And if people don't believe this, if they have any question about that, uh, you, I, the other left, then we don't want to get it alive. It's a family. It's out right now. Go to Amazon, type in unwanted, 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 dead or alive. It's a 500 page expose documented thoroughly. Uh, who said what to do? Those who said they were prisoners, those who denied they were prisoners, people in government, and it shows who the liars were. But you read the book, you know who's who's caught it. Here. Well, the bottom line is the American people got caught. And, and, boy, and by boy. the way, it, it didn't start with Vietnam. On the back of your oh. book here, uh, American POWs from the Korean War were shipped to China to be beaten, starved, and tortured, and eventually die in Chinese slave labor camps. Well, of course, medical experiments too, because they 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 were they were to find out what made the Caucasians think, what they were different about us. For example, in Korea, uh, they would take an American and, and stand him outside in the bucket of water. Uh, in a bucket of water, big enough for the feet to sit, and it would be below zero. Well, the ice would freeze around the person, they would throw him into the, into the uh, barracks, which were uneven, and let it thaw. And then they would experiment with that, see what it did to the person's feet. How the Caucasian reacted to this, 
first of all, the Chinese might, when the Koreans were in the world, they knew nothing about our culture, they knew nothing about our people, they knew nothing about our, 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 our physiology. So they experimented with stupid things like that. They also took chicken livers, for example, and uh, slit the skin and, and put them under the skin, and then sew them up. Chicken livers, because they wanted to find out how they would react to chicken livers as a medical treatment for whatever they were doing it for. And they kept meticulous notes on all this stuff. Well, you see, these are all war crimes, actually war crimes that happened. And they, why, was, why was nobody ever tried for this? Why was no one ever tried for this? I remember in Korea, I was with the, uh, uh, with the lady, and I was given an assignment to go to the, and I knew a little bit about taking pictures, not an expert, but I was sent in to take photographs of uh, uh, Americans who had like done by the witness of Congress of our friends. Well, I did. And I found one instance, which is in my book, too, that I did. I don't want to go on Pictures of Americans laying in a ditch, kneeling in a ditch, okay? Kneeling with their head against the dirt and with one bullet behind their head. They just went down meticulously and shot each a, a, a prisoner. They didn't take prisoners. When they did, they didn't want to feed them. Maybe they couldn't feed them. They didn't want to fool with it. They assassinated them. They shot the behind the head of one bullet. This was cheaper than feeding them. And I found that 500 Americans kneeling in the ditch and took pictures of this. And they're still in, they're still in the, uh, uh, they have to be in the uh, uh, Library of Congress or the Defense Department. But I've got one of the pictures, two of the pictures, in my book that I took showing this. And, and, and there was like approximately 500 Americans, young GIs. Now these you guys remember, 17, 18 year old guys joined up, they uh, waved in the flag, they end up being in Korea, being taken prisoner, and then being shot. These are young Americans. What do we do about it? Nothing. Nothing. Why? Because we have a control of media. Yeah, by the way, let me let me just touch on that for a minute. We've just got a few minutes left. My guest is right. Robert Robert Pelton. And we've got the Patriot Media out there. Republic Broadcasting, Genesis Broadcasting, Alex Jones, who won't mention the Jewish connection. The and, and we've got this right from the Jews, Robert. Rabbi Weiss said, some call it communism, I call it Judaism for the masses. And that's what Alexander Solzhenitsyn pointed out. And, and he said, well, you know, if we had just stood up against them, if we had, had stood up against them instead of just allowing them to do this, you know, things would have been a lot different. Well, there would have been, of course. But how many people know this? How many people know this? How much has our media said about it? Nothing. Because it's part and parcel of the problem. It's a controlled media. By the same people. By the same people who have done everything else. They put out the news. They put out the word. They teach us what they want us to know. And by omission, they don't lie about it. They just omit it. They don't tell it. So what people do not know. The general population of the U.S., if they were telling the truth, would be up in arms and they'd probably destroy the conspiracy. And that is the fear. Because we do have an armed populace. So what they do by media, they, by omission, they continue the lies, they continue the history as they want us to understand it. And, it. and you'll never hear what you're saying in the media. I've never seen it in the media. Now, uh, we. Uh, Alex Jones just went on, and, and I've, I've commented on this, he went on CNN, and they, he did basically the same thing with CNN that the Today Show did when they brought the militia up. You know, you can have my gun when you can take it from my cold, dead fingers. They came yeah. off like assholes. Alex Jones came off like an asshole with a bullhorn and made all patriots, anybody that's against gun control, look bad, look bad crazy. And they they put on Norm Olson on uh, in, uh, NBC 
when the militia, oh, look, uh, look, there's a, you know, you can have my gun when you take it from my cold, dead fingers, made the militia look like redneck assholes. They wouldn't have me <laughs> on, and uh, that's why. Well, that's why they do it. They make it look different than it really is. They are not telling the truth. They're not showing the truth on television. They'd rather have a good, a good show, a, a, a show showing a lot of nudity, a lot of sex on TV. The truth. I'm sorry, that's the way it is. So what you say is not going to be heard, except by people who listen to your show. It's certainly right. not going to be brought out. Of, it's not going to be brought out of CNN. No, no, they were they they control the media. And they control Hollywood, all of the films out there. Right, they're predicting. I mean, they use Hollywood to predict or give the orders for Sandy Hook, for Aurora. They, 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 that was in the movies. And, and they did the same thing with The Simpsons in 9 11. 9 11 is coming here. 9 11 is coming. Oh, of course, of course, of course. It's never been taped. It's all hat now, though. People aren't even talking about 9 11. They've gotten away with it because they, the people do not know what happened, do not know the truth about it, do not know who was behind the fear, and uh, we never will. It's buried <laughs> in the trash heap of history. I refer, I history. refer to 9-11 on the air as an exaggerated case of Jewish lightning. The, the Twin Towers were defective. The engineering firm that had been in there for 10 years said to her, we can't build scaffolding that high, so... The only thing that can be do be done is take them down. That was too expensive, so they uh, they blew it up after selling it, leasing it to Larry Silverstein. He had it for three months, insured it to the hilt, and allowed the Mossad to come in there and, and bring it down with uh, uh, atomic bombs. There was no planes brought those buildings down. They, they, right. they, no, but, but they make a good point, though. Clay, right? there's no evidence now, is there? What's that? There's no evidence left. Oh, no, no, they shipped that off. They shipped that off. Well, that's what I'm didn't... saying. That's what I'm saying. The, the whole thing was all done to delete any evidence that could bring out anything later that could be uncovered and proven. So you can, you know, it's just deliberately done that way. And uh, again, uh, the, the media was very lax in this, as could be expected. And then, of course, all of your government agencies, everybody played ball. Either be their ignorance or uh, design. In many cases, a design. And a lot of the followers of it were ignorant. They didn't know any better. They didn't want to rock, rock the boat. So that's the way it is. Uh, Robert, right. Robert Pelton, we're out of time here. Thank you so much, and uh, links are there for all of your books. And if you don't want to know about history, at least see how we uh, used to eat in the uh, in the uh, colonial when this country was formed. <laughs> well, I really appreciate your time on everything. Well, thank Any you. Sir. We want any, any time, give me a holler. You want to do a show, I'm available. All right, sir. I appreciate that. I will have you back on. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. Thank you, too. Bye. Bye-bye.